Hi everybody and welcome to Walking an Application. Okay, so before we begin, let me give you a quick summary of what we are doing in this room. So we are given a uh, we are given a website or web application, and we are supposed to find out if there's vulner vulnerabilities that can be exploited by um, uh, you know bad people that that uh, might visit the website or web application. The first thing we should do is explore the site uh, ourselves and write down what pages you know and features the website or web application has. Um, luckily, TryHackMe has done that for us in uh, tasks 2, so we don't need to do that ourselves. Uh, what we're going to do is just use the tools provided by our web browsers to look through the code of some of the pages of the website or web application and see if we find something that might uh, you know, be exploited by... Um, as I mentioned, bad people, right? So maybe there's some information there and, and not only in the code itself, but also in the HTML comments in the code that developers might have forgotten to remove or thought it was not necessary to remove, right? So so these comments can potentially reveal some you know, information that might lead the bad people to seeing pages, files, etc. that you know they're not supposed to. And while we are under the hood of the uh, website, we're going to try to see if we can access and read an article hidden behind a paywall by making a very small change to the, uh, to the code uh, of the article page. You also see how we can pause the execution of some JavaScript code in a certain JavaScript file using something called breakpoints, which are used in debugging. In our case, there's something showing up and disappearing on the web page when we reload it, uh, but it happens so fast that we cannot see what that thing is. We're told by uh, TryHackMe to set a breakpoint at a certain line of code so that we can pause the execution of the JavaScript code at that particular point, which will help us review uh, what uh, that flashing thing on the page is, which happens to be a box with the flag we want to get our hands on. And we are going to see the network uh, requests a page uh, is making uh, when we open a page and when we interact with the page, like for example when we fill out and submit a form like we are going to do. Okay, so uh, this is for the summary and let's go ahead and try to uh, solve uh, some tasks and if there's any questions, you know, feel free to, uh, you know, ask down in the comment section. Okay, let's go. So in the first uh, task, the only thing we need to do is just start the virtual machine and also uh, we can um, start the attack box. So let's do that. Now let's uh, open Firefox inside the attack box. And now let's visit the, the URL that TryHackMe is um, uh, asking us to uh, visit. There you go. So let's click on complete it and move on to the next uh, task, which is exploring the website. And what we need to do here is just read the above. Okay, so you guys can uh, do that. Uh, and now just continue to the uh, next uh, task, which is uh, viewing the page source. So the first question here is what is the flag from the HTML uh, comment? So what we need to do here is first right click with uh, your mouse someplace uh, on the page. Then uh, choose view page source. At the top inside the HTML comment we see that they're working on a new page. And what we need to do is uh, just copy the page name and paste it next to the URL uh, we open right after uh, .com. Then press enter. And now we've accessed the new page uh, they're working on, which contains our flag. Let's copy the flag and use it to answer the question. Okay, and now, uh, what is the flag from the secret link? So let's uh, go back to the page source. 
we can find the secret link on line 41. The secret link is the value of the href uh, attribute or the uh, hypertext reference attribute of the anchor element, which is nested inside the paragraph element. We can access the secret link in different ways and it's up to you which one uh, you choose. Uh, so we can copy the name of the page and paste it next to the URL we opened right after uh, .com or we can just click on the word to inside the paragraph below the image because we already know it's the link to the secret page uh, even though the word to is not styled as a uh, as a link. Uh, and of course, uh, you, you might uh, ask, uh, <laughs> but how do we know that the word uh, the word to is the secret link? Well, we already found out in the page source on line 41. So if we go back to the page source on line 41 and we take a look at the anchor element, we can see that it's wrapped around the word to. And you can actually see that the word to uh, is a link just by hovering over it and you take a look at the bottom left corner of the page where you see a URL pop up, which happens to be the URL for the secret page we want to access. Of course, if we hadn't looked inside the page source, it would have been harder to know that the word to is actually a link because it's not styled as a link, as I mentioned earlier. Unless, of course, we by accident hover over it and notice the URL that pops up at the bottom left corner of the page. And you can also just click on the name of the page, which is used as a value of the href uh, attribute of the anchor element. So let's access the secret page and let's copy the flag and use it to answer the question. Okay, and now, what is the directory listing uh, flag? So, if we take a look at the page source, we can see several HTML elements where two of them have the href uh, attribute and the others have the source attribute. The elements I'm referring to are the two link elements here, the image element here, and the three script elements right here. The href attribute inside the link elements and each source attribute in the other elements is assigned with a value, which happens to be a path to different files. But what does these uh, files have in common? Well, they're all stored in the same directory, which is called assets. And that piques my interest a bit. It makes me want to poke around a bit and see if I can, you know, uh, access this uh, directory or the uh, directory listing page uh, and find some other files in there. Hopefully we can find a file that will lead us to our flag. So let's try to access the directory or the uh, directory listing page uh, and see if we can find something interesting. So what we need to do right after dot com forward slash of the URL of the page source is type the name of the directory, which is assets and press enter. And you can do the same um, on the uh, main page if you know, if you prefer that you can choose. So just type uh, forward slash assets right after uh, dot com and press enter. And when we do that, what do we see? Well, we see that this directory contains more than the five files we discovered on the page source. And most importantly, it contains the file we are looking for, which is a text file with the name flag. And when we open the file, we get our flag. So let's copy the flag and use it to answer the question. There you go. And now what is the framework flag? If we look at the HTML comment at the bottom of the page source, we can see that the website is using the Try Hack Me Framework version 1.2. We also see a link to the framework's uh, website. So let's open the link and take a look around uh, at the framework's website and see if we can find some information that we can use to uh, gain access to something that we're not supposed to, like a directory or, or file. 
right away on the homepage of the Frameworks website, we see that the latest version of the framework is 1.3, which means that the framework uh, version of the Acme IT support site, which is version 1.2, is outdated, which is not good for them. So next, we can focus our attention at the change log page, which can tell us what bugs and vulnerabilities have been fixed with each update of the framework and see if we can find some information uh, that will help us access something that, you know, we're not supposed to. So let's read and see what they've uh, done or fixed in each update. So version 1.1, we've now added contact forms to our page uh, templates so you can receive messages from your visitors. Version 1.2, we've added a backup facility in the administration portal. And version 1.3, we have had uh, an issue where our backup process was creating a file in the web directory called tmp.zip which potentially could have been read by website visitors. This file is now stored in an area that is unreadable by the public. And there we have it. So since the framework version of the Acme website is outdated, uh, you know, it's still version 1.2, that vulnerability is still there. So we can get our hands on that zip file and see what it contains. So let's copy the name of the directory and paste it right after .com of the website's URL and press enter to download the zip file. Now let's open the zip file. What we see is that it contains a text file called flag, which contains our flag. So let's copy the flag and use it to answer the question. There you go. And now let's move on to task four, developer tools, inspector. Okay, and let's see what we need to do here. So what is the flag behind the paywall? So what we need to do is go to the news page on the Acme IT support website, then click on the third article, then right click on the box that is blocking the content and then click on inspect. And we see a div element with the uh, class premium customer blocker is highlighted. And this div element and the elements nested inside are the elements used to create the box with the uh, text and the contact us button that is blocking the content. And on the right side, we can see the CSS styling applied to this div element. Things like the position of the box, the width and height of the box, background color, how text is supposed to be aligned inside the box, etc., etc. But what we need to look at right now is just the display property with the value block. And what we need to do is click on block and highlight it and type none instead, which removes the box away from the news article page. Now we're able to read the article without being a premium customer and see what our flag is. So let's go back and answer the question. There you go. And now let's move on to the next uh, task, developer tools, debugger. Okay, let's see what we need to do. So what is the flag in the red box? Okay, so what we need to do here is first go to the contact page on the website. If we reload the page, we see something red flashing, just like they mentioned in the explanation of this task. It's a red box quickly showing and disappearing. And this box is what contains our flag. So let's make the box show up on the page and stop it from disappearing so that we can actually see our flag. What we need to do here is inside the dev tools, we click on debugger. We expand the assets folder. We click on the JavaScript file called flash.min. 
Then we click on the pretty print option, the curly braces right here, to give the code a better uh, formatting so that it will be easier for us to read the code. Then we scroll down to the bottom of the file and on line 108 we see the line of code we're looking for. Then we insert a breakpoint on line 108 by clicking on the line number. And we reload the page and here is our flag. Let's close the dev tools for a moment and let's copy the flag and use it to answer the question. There you go. And now let's move on to the next uh, task, developer tools, network. Okay, let's see what we need to do here. Uh, so what is the flag shown on the contact message network request? Okay, so first uh, let's open the dev tools again, click on the network tab, then we reload the page and see the files the page is requesting. Uh, the page is making get request as we can see in the method column. But now let's make a post request by filling out the form and submitting it by pressing the send message uh, button and see the new entry pop up at the bottom of the other requests. There you go. And now let's highlight our post request. And let's see if uh, we've received some response data that hopefully contains our flag by clicking on the response tab. And there you go. We have a little message that says uh, message received and our flag. So let's copy the flag and use it to answer the question. There you go. And we are done with this room. Okay, everybody, if you enjoyed the video and found it helpful, I would really, really appreciate it if you gave the video a thumbs up and make sure to subscribe to the channel for more videos on Try Hack Me, Cybersecurity and Ethical Hacking. Thank you guys for watching and I'll talk to you next time.